Yeah. Tell us, how is it that in the Lord's Prayer it says, and lead us not into, ta- into temptation? Does God actually lead us into temptation? Well, that's a very good question. And clearly it has to be uh, tackled. That question has to be addressed. It's not possible to let it go. Uh, because yet yeah, the impression is definitely that what we are saying to the Lord is, Lord, Holy Father, because this prayer is addressed to the Father, uh, Father, don't let me, uh, don't lead me into temptation. Don't lead me to temptation. It's clear, uh, if we look at the uh, phraseology there, that we are praying to God the Father not to lead us into temptation. Well, that, now that's very strange. Can, uh, as, you, as you point out, Louis, can God the Father lead me to temptation? Uh, when the way that we refer to God the Father, uh, He is holy, uh, He is just, He is love, He is light. Um, and Jesus Himself, the Son of God, God the Son, uh, says to us, Be holy as your Father is holy. So how can it be uh, that uh, we can say that God the Father uh, leads us into temptation? Uh, That seems impossible. So um, how can we explain it? What what, what is the answer to to that issue? Well, let us not forget that the Lord's Prayer was spoken in Aramaic by our Lord. Jesus spoke Aramaic. Okay. Okay. So in order to look at how we can analyze this in a better way, we have to go back to the original Aramaic as best as we can, because uh, what we have now is the Greek uh, translation of Matthew, of the Aramaic words of Jesus, okay? So the Greek definitely says, there is no doubt about it, that uh, lead us not into temptation, means senengis imasis pirasmon, Holy Father, don't lead me to temptation. It says that. Now, if we go back to the Aramaic original, what we find is that there is a particular mood uh, of the verb that exists in Syriac, Syriac being a branch of, uh, or Aramaic being a branch of Syriac. Uh, And by the way, there is a village in in Syria today that still speaks the language of Jesus. I hope they're still there. They haven't been killed off. Um, but if we, if we go to the original Aramaic grammar construction of that, uh, of that statement, we will find there is a particular mood of the verb in Aramaic that is what we can call loosely a, the permissive, a permissive word, a permissive verb. What does that mean? Probably the best way of understanding that statement and lead us not into temptation would be by looking into the Aramaic verb constructions that exist for us, particularly the mood, and we can say a, a particular mood that exists in Aramaic that does not exist in Greek is where we talk about permission. Therefore, the Aramaic would most likely be something like this. And do not permit us to be led into temptation. In other words, it is not God who leads us to temptation. We know it's the devil who does that. But what we are saying in that prayer is, God the Father, do not permit me, once the devil starts tempting me, don't allow me, intervene, do something to stop me from uh, entering into that temptation. Mm -hmm. I think probably the best way of avoiding um, the implication from the original Greek Uh, and from the King James Version and so forth, that God leads you to temptation. That's inconceivable and impossible. So we can just make that correction uh, to the Lord's Prayer by saying, uh, and and do not permit us to be led into temptation. So the word permit, how do you you, uh, extrapolate that? What does that actually mean? It's from the Aramaic. The Aramaic has a possibility of a particular mood, M-O-O-D. Verbs have moods, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, as, uh, as in all languages, uh, you know, you have the, uh, just the imperative mood, you have the 
uh, the uh, subju subjunctive mood, you have different moods. Um, and the one mood, that ex a verbal mood, that exists in, in the Syriac is this permissive mood. Mm, okay. and, and that's, uh, the, the, I think that's the closest we can get to having a, a more correct understanding of what Jesus would have said. Thank you, Father.